Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Novel Idea. It is time for part two of chapter books in our birthday celebration. Thank you to so many of you that have been shouting out this channel. Lately, I have been so overwhelmingly blessed by so many different ones of you that have talked about me or talked about my favorite books or have talked about what I like to read. And so many of you have joined in the last month or so, and I am so thankful. So thanks for being here. And without further ado, we have a big stack of books. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna start on the younger side and um, we'll go up into the YA category as well. We're gonna try. <laughs> All right, so Captain's Courageous is a very, very, very different Rudyard Kipling story and it is about a young boy and fisherman's family. It doesn't have anything to do with jungle. It doesn't have anything to do with animals. It's just a very different book and it was heartbreaking and lovely. This one has just stayed with me as a an all-time favorite. So Captain's Courageous, Rudyard Kipling. This is a funny one to have on the younger side, but the reason why it's here is because this book was read to me on a long trip. Whoever was writing with us tended to read this to me, and it was usually my grandma. And so it is Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is the story of a rabbit who has a premonition of danger when he finds out that humans are moving into the area where the rabbit warren is. So they are trying to move themselves out of harm's way. We have Trumpet of the Swan. I think when most people think of E.B. White, they think of Charlotte's Web or they think of Stuart Little, but this was my favorite E.B. White book as a child. And it's about a very introspective young boy who loves wildlife. His father and he discover this swan's nest one spring. And he befriends this little swan who has a hard time because he is mute. He and the boy form a bond that lasts a lifetime. I've talked a few times about LM Boston on my channel, but she has a series of books called The Green No. And this is the first one, Children of the Green No. And this is about a young boy who has never met his great grandmother, but when his father and his stepmother move away to India and he is at boarding school, his great grandmother basically asks for him to come live with her. And it's about finding home and about what home truly is, and about the joys of discovery of our heritage and our roots. And it is kind of a fantasy. It's, it's just really wonderful. So this whole series, but this is the first one. Children of the Green No, Ellen Boston. Elizabeth Enright books. Uh, the first one is the Melendi Quartet and the Melendis are a family and this is the first book, The Saturdays. She has a way of capturing the feelings, the actions, the thoughts of childhood in a way like no other author I've ever experienced. 
So this is the first one. This is my favorite one. This whole quartet is just wonderful. Um, she also has Thimble Summer, which I loved, and Gone Away Lake, which I also loved. I don't own copies of those ones, but I would recommend those ones as well. All about children in different situations, in different stages of life, and just as wonderful. All right, then we have The Great Brain. This is by John D. Fitzgerald, and it is semi-autobiographical. They are absolutely hilarious. I think there are six books in this series. We loved the brothers. We love their relationship. We love the way that they, you know, disagree, have a hard time with one another, but they find a way through it, find a way to love each other, um, love their parents. Both parents are alive. <laughs> Not your typical children's book, but it's, it's just so fun. Late 1800s, early 1900s. It's just a wonderful, wonderful series. Then I have some George MacDonald books. Um, I fell in love with George MacDonald through his fairy tales. My favorite ones are The Princess and the Goblin. The sequel to this is The Princess and Curdie. I like it just as much, but my favorite one in this trilogy is The Wise Woman. And The Wise Woman will not be understood if you don't read The Princess and the Goblin. So you have to read this first Princess and Curdy, you can take it or leave it, but The Princess and the Goblin, you have to read before you read The Wise Woman, and The Wise Woman is my favorite, and it was my favorite as a little girl. We also have The Golden Key, um, also a favorite as a little girl. I really connected with her. Her name is Tangle. And then The Genius of Willie McMichael, and this one is the story of a young boy who is a genius in many ways, intellectually, but also just has a real gift with his hands. But it's a story about how he uses those gifts in order to help those around him. He doesn't want his gifts to diminish on himself. Uh, he doesn't want it to be just his life that his gifts are enhancing. And so it's it's a pretty fabulous book. Meindert de Young was, I want to say Dutch. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's right. Um, he's most famous for The Wheel on the School. And this is a truly wonderful story. It's about a set of school children who really would love for the good luck of a stork to be brought to their village and how they work together with themselves, but with their whole village and even those outside of their village in order to make that happen. And it's absolutely wonderful. He also wrote The Tower by the Sea, which I adore, but I cannot find a copy of it. He also wrote Along Came a Dog, which is another one of my favorites, but I don't own a copy of that one. And then we have Shadrach, which is about a bunny rabbit. <laughs> it's illustrated by um, Maurice Sendak, and so they're, they're not very many illustrations, but they're are a few and I absolutely love this copy. Another animal story. This is called A Dog for Davies Hill. It's by Claire Bice and let me see if I can find it here. So this is all about uh, a boy who wants to own a sheep dog and train it and how that dog actually finds him and the way that they 
teach one another. This one is one I have mentioned quite a lot on my channel, but I've never shown it before. And that is Sir McHenry. So this is an Arthurian legend uh, retold in a reimagined way. And so what has happened is somehow this man here and this little robot have been transported back in time and the dwarves that you see here um, find this box and it says machinery on it, but they read it as McHenry. And when he comes out in all of his shininess, they think that it's a knight in armor and they think that it's a dwarf actually, a uh, knight in armor. And the man here is the one that created this. So they have quite the adventure with Merlin and some of the other characters. So this is by Tom McGowan and this is one that I adored <laughs> as a child. Mr. Grumpy and the Kitten and it is by, I cannot remember, Fleur Conkling and this is basically just what it says. It's about Mr. Grumpy, who is grumpy, and about the kitten who changes that for him. And it's, just, it's very endearing. This is Eight Cousins, and this is uh, Louisa May Alcott. She is 12 or 13 when this opens. Um, she has come to live with her uncle. She also has a bunch of aunts. And so the alternative title for this is actually the Ant Hill. But her aunts have only ever had boys. So all of her cousins are boys. And she has never been around boys in her entire life before. And so it's just this story about her um, coming to uh, be a part of a very large family when she has only ever been on her own with her parents and just what that means to her, how that changes her life and how it changes their lives. And it's a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, it has a sequel called Rose in Bloom. That's much more of a YA, whereas this is very much a children's story still. This was an ex-library copy, but this is Beezus and Ramona. It is the only Ramona book that I like. <laughs> I just really love Beezus and Ramona because of the very endearing relationship that these two have to form with one another. It's very much a study in patience and it's done right and it's done well. And so I would recommend Beezus and Ramona. I don't know that I would recommend the rest of the Ramona books, but Beezus and Ramona, I would do. Then I have The Rescuers. This I actually had a 45 record of when I was a little girl. Um, I got the book later on, but the first time I had this read to me was on a one of those little 45 records. There's a whole series of them, the Miss Bianca books. This was the first one that I ever experienced and it endeared them to me. They are absolutely precious. Every single one of them is about helping other people, doing what is hard in situations where you don't think that you have what it takes. And it's just fabulous. The Borrowers. 
So I think I said recently in one of my tag videos that this was a book that just absolutely captured my imagination as a child. I um, got to where I wanted to look under floorboards, look underneath houses, would leave little matchboxes and um, postage stamps and paper clips and all kinds of things around in hopes that the borrowers would find them. So this was a book that gave me hours and hours of childhood delight, even when I wasn't reading it. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. So this one actually scared me pretty badly the first time that I read it, but the ending and the way that Mrs. Frisbee is about her family is what kept me reading it and what also made me love it. And so it's a pretty special book, Robert C. O'Brien. It's a Newbery winner. But this is the story of a mama rat and her family and the need to move. She knows that um, her husband had friends and so she goes to find them to, to help her to move and what she finds out in the process that she never knew. It's, it's got suspense. It's got that that thing that just keeps drawing you on into the book because you just need to know what's going to happen. All right. And then I have a few that I don't own and put the, or I'm going to mention them and have them put up here. Heidi is the first one. I, I don't, I thought I had a copy of Heidi, but I can't find it if I do. Joanna Spirey. Heidi is an orphan who goes to live with her grandfather up on a mountain in the Alps. Just a wonderful story of love and friendship and overcoming adversity. It's, it's really neat. Then I I also have Millie and Ollie, Raynard the Fox, the Peterkin Papers, and the Mary Frances books. Lloyd Alexander has a series that is quite popular. It is the Pridane Chronicles, and that's like the Book of Three, and the Black Cauldron, and the High King, and all of those. And those are wonderful books. But this was my first experience with Lloyd Alexander. And it is a loose <laughs> Greek mythology story. And it has to do with um, being transformed and getting to go on a quest. It's funny. It is magical. It is a story of true friendship. It's just lovely. Now for my kids' younger ones, these are quite, there are quite a few I don't own, so I'm just gonna talk about them. American Girls, my, both of my girls absolutely loved American Girl book. My oldest loved the Kirsten and the Samantha books. And my youngest loved the Addie and Kit. And the reason why I don't own them is because they took them with them <laughs> when they moved out. Uh, they read A to Z mysteries all the time. All three of my kids absolutely loved them. These are the Little Maid books and they're not all written by the same people. There's Little Maid of Old Philadelphia, that's written by Edna Cook. There's Little Maid of Old New York, that's written by Elizabeth Pillsbury. This is by Alice Turner Curtis, and this is my absolute favorite, which is why I have it, because my girls have the other ones. So Little Maid of Old Connecticut, and it, she gets to be a spy, <laughs> which is why I love this story. Um, it's just a fun, 
very wholesome uh, set of stories. So uh, there should be one for just about all of the original 13 colonies and they're just called the Little Maid historical books. I also have um, King Arthur and his knights. This was my son's constant nap time companion for about a year and a half. The whole Betsy Tacy series. These are by Maud Hart Lovelace and they're, this is Betsy Tacy Tibb. Betsy Tacy is the first one, and then I think Betsy Tacy goes over the big hill, and then it's Betsy Tacy Tib. But this was actually the first one that my daughter read, and then we went looking for more. And um, these go all the way up into adulthood for Betsy in particular. And so there are a couple of also like tributary novels and one of those tributary novels is is my absolute favorite in this series but as a child um all of the betsy tacy books were um, my oldest daughter's favorite she loved them my youngest daughter loved this one this is the phantom toll booth by Norton Jester. And this is a big play on words book. So you really do, you can't listen to this. You have to read it and you have to be okay with, you know, double meanings, triple meanings, with um, learning to play with words and numbers and rhyme and reason and this I just loved it and so did my kids my youngest this is one of her favorite books to this day some others that I don't have are Bud Not Buddy and that's by Christopher Paul Curtis that was my son's nickname when he was growing up was Bud and uh, he didn't like Buddy so he and his name is Christopher <laughs> And his last name is Paul. <laughs> and he got to meet the author later, which also cemented it for him. Again, one of the reasons why I can't hold this up is because my girls took the set of, uh, the sets actually of Little House books. They, they have them. But Farmer Boy especially was a favorite. They really loved it. And it was mainly because of the descriptions of food <laughs> in that book. They loved all of the food descriptions. This is Pig Scrolls. This is another Greek retelling, reimagining, and it is all about Grilius the pig, and uh, he has been transformed into a pig as a punishment, and he has to prove to the gods that he is worthy to be a poet and a person. <laughs> Freckles, which is actually a prequel to Girl of the Limberlost by Jean Stratton Porter. Girl of the Limberlost has a very uh, nostalgic place because they listen to it on a yearly basis, but the book Freckles is my youngest favorite of that whole series. All the Boxcar Kids, of course. The Sword in the Tree, Sarah, Plain and Tall, and The Ride of Paul Revere. John Paul Jones, and that's partly because he's related to us. And then also Davy Crockett and Martha Washington. And then lastly, for this age range, we have the Sophie books. These are by Dick King Smith. There are about five of them, I think, and they are about a very precocious young girl who is more of a tomboy and she loves animals. And so there's one about her cat and one about a pony and just all kinds of little scrapes and things that she ends up in. So the Sophie books by Dick King Smith. 
I have some YA ones to go through, but this is getting long. And so I think I will maybe talk about the YA books in another video. All right. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. And I will see you again in another video very soon. Like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to.